Every single AFL preseason, there seems to be one or two teams that get hit with the injury stick a little bit harder than other clubs. And this offseason, it does seem to be Hawthorne. Over the last few weeks, and most particularly in their recent intra-club, Hawthorne have incurred a few injuries that are far from ideal. So in this video, I'm going to discuss those injuries and also consider the fact that what might seem to have adversity now could prove to have some silver linings down the track. So let's be specific about what injuries I'm talking about. So first of all, Will Day a few weeks back was confirmed to have a stress fracture in his foot and is in doubt for round one, which on the surface is not the absolute end of the world, although as their reigning best and fairest, him missing out on pre-season preparation is not really ideal for a team obviously hoping to start the season well. Dylan Moore is also a bit of an understated gun at Hawthorne, I would say, as a high half forward. He's a quality player, also been recently diagnosed with glandular fever. Now, glandular fever can be a tricky one to really project how it's going to go. On the plus side, touch wood, it sounds like he is still a chance to be there for round one, but glandular fever can be tricky, and we know the upper end of glandular fever can have some long term effects. But fingers crossed, it seems like he is a chance to at least feature early in the season, which is, you know, a pretty good result for the Hawks. But we go forward to their intra-club match that happened recently. James Blank, their key defender, goes down with an ACL and is pretty much ruled out of season 2024. And in the same match, Giath pulls a hamstring. He's out for at least a couple of months. So the injuries are starting to pile up. And to different extents, these are some really important players from a structural point of view. Specifically, their key defender, James Blank. And I'll explain why. I've done a lot of content over the offseason analyzing every team's best 22 and getting a feel for what their list depth is in different positions. And the takeaway for Hawthorne is that one area they're particularly light on in is their key defenders. So James Sicily, obviously one of the absolute best in the game at what he does and a super important player for the Hawks. But behind that, James Blank was probably going to be in that round one team as that secondary key defender who was a fair bit taller than Sicily, if I'm not mistaken. You got Sam Frost, who I would say is not quite as good a defender as James Blank in a shutdown sense and can be a little bit of a liability with the ball in hand. Also at the back end of his career, you'd think. And past that, it is kind of a selection of Will McCabe, who was their recent first round draft pick, 197 centimeters, good talent, went in the first round, but far from ready to be taking on the opposition's best tall defender, you'd think. Then there's Denver Granger Barras, and he was taken at pick six in the 2020 draft, if I'm not mistaken, and hasn't really been able to make this position his own. Now, from a development point of view, he's a fair bit further along than someone like a Will McKay, but it wasn't that long ago we were talking about him as a potential key forward. What we do know is that Hawthorne were proactive, and they've already signed a supplementary pick in Ethan Phillips. Now, Ethan Phillips has been a high-quality key defender in the VFL for a number of years now. Like, I've been hearing his name as a potential draft prospect for several years, if I'm not mistaken. So he gets an opportunity, relatively ready-made, and could feature early in season 2024. So while this is you know, far from ideal for the Hawks in terms of optimizing their best 22 to potentially win games this year, I really don't think this is necessarily the end of the world when you consider where Hawthorne are at in their developmental phase. As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't necessarily be thinking, wow, it's finals or bust this year. There are other teams in the league where I think that is certainly true. And for Hawthorne, I think it's still about padding out that layer of depth, getting some experience into the right guys, the young players that they have, and some of their best performers, by the way, are still like 50 games or less. So what this can present, not only the James Blank injury, but also, you know, someone like a Will Day, potentially not starting the season in the team, does give them an opportunity to explore the different parts of their list. One guy in particular is someone called Henry Hustwaite, who, as far as I'm aware, has definitely been eye-catching. I saw David King comment on Hustwaite, and he's comparing him to like a massive Pendlebury. So Hustwaite is 195 centimeters, and probably not your typical big-bodied, bullocking midfielder, and he's not necessarily a Patrick Cripps. He's probably more in that Bontempelli, Pendlebury, vibe, if that makes sense. Now, obviously, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as those players, but probably is a player that certainly gives a different look to that Hawthorne team and probably is at the point where he needs games to improve. So opportunities can arise from adversity such as this. So if Will Day misses football, Josh Weddle might take a few more stoppages. Henry Husswaite might take a few more stoppages. And long term, I think this can only really be a good thing for the Hawks. As for their tall back situation, yeah, I think it does kind of leave their best 22 exposed. That being said, I remember back in 2015 as an Eagles fan, in that preseason, West Coast lost their two best key position defenders that year, Eric McKenzie and Mitch Brown. I think they both did ACLs that preseason. Jeremy McGovern had barely played a game of football at that point, and they revolutionized their back line with the Weagles web, restructured everything, and were able to use guys like McGovern, who had barely played, Will Schofield, who was more of a running defender at that point, that turned him into a key defender. And they used medium types like Shepard and Wellingham as genuine interceptors, and became an extremely hard defense to break down. So I'm not forecasting that Hawthorne do something like that. I'm just pointing to a clear example where a team's back line had been decimated 
decimated and they were able to completely rejig and also unearth some players that would go on to be all Australians. As for someone like Giath, it's probably most frustrating because he's also at the point now where he probably needs continuity and experience to really improve as a footballer. However, they've just recruited Massimo D'Ambrosio. Guys like Carl Amon are still there. Morrison is another player that will certainly be able to fill that void. So from a depth point of view, they're okay there, although it is frustrating to lose him. And with Dylan Moore, again, we don't know if he's going to be out for round one, but could this potentially change the way they plan to use Nick Watson this year? Could Nick Watson potentially, rather than being a forward 50 crumbing stoppage player, do they push him up as a high half forward? Because I think he has the attributes to be quite an eye-catching player, kicking the ball inside 50 as much as I can see him at the feet of the contest you know snapping goals from crumbing situations so I think there's opportunities here I think there's still plenty of reason for Hawthorne to be excited for this year and I wouldn't be saying this if there was a team in the top eight dealing with these sorts of injuries if the D's had lost a couple of key players to similar injuries then I would be worried same thing for Port Adelaide same thing for Collingwood but where Hawthorne at is at specifically, I think this could actually lead to good things. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. I'm intrigued to see where Hawthorne go from here. But as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.